Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by by Metalloid Firearms and Sports, utilizing botanical technologies to develop an advanced high-performance line of environmentally friendly firearm maintenance products that will not only clean and protect your firearms, but also your leather and wood components. Find out more at MetalloidFirearmsProducts.com. And by Mr. Musky Charters, offering full-service guided fishing trips for walleye, muskie, bass, and sturgeon on Lake St. Clair and the Detroit and St. Clair Rivers. Booking information is online at MrMuskyCharters.com. Well, hey everybody, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. We are here in the first couple days of the firearm deer season, and we are excited to bring you our hunts. Um, we had a couple cameras in the UP. Uh, I was over in West Michigan. Jenny's over on the east side of the state. And uh, <laughs> let me just say, it's been a rough opener. Warm weather, deer not really moving, but we're out there with cameras rolling. We're gonna show you what we did and where we were at. So you stay tuned. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze, dancing on the pine forest floor. The autumn colors catch your eyes, here come the crystal winter skies, it's Michigan. Michigan out of doors Someday our children all will see This is their finest legacy The wonder and the love of Michigan As the wind comes whispering through the trees The sweet smell of nature's in the air From the Great Lakes to the quiet stream Shining like a sportsman's dream It's the love of Michigan we all share Michigan Out of Doors is presented by By Country Smokehouse, offering a variety of meat products. Country Smokehouse is located three miles south of I-69 on M53, just south of Imlay City. Country Smokehouse is a meat processor, a butcher, and a destination for sportsmen. By KL Outdoor, a Muskegon manufacturer of sportsmen's outdoor products for over 30 years, featuring the terrain line of hard-sided hunting blinds designed for quick setup and removal with quiet operation. For more information and other products, kloutdoor.com. By G5 Outdoors, makers of the Quest and Prime bows. Manufactured and designed in Memphis, Michigan, G5 offers archery bows, broadheads, and accessories. On the web at g5outdoors.com. By Meyer, a destination for hunting, fishing, and camping supplies. Offering hunting apparel and accessories, as well as hunting and fishing licenses. Meyer has nearly everything you need to take on nature and get you there. Good morning. Good morning, guys. What's going on here? Happy opening day. Yeah, you too. <laughs> so what's the plan? Well, we're gonna try to get Jacob a buck this morning. Cool. Where are we hunting? Uh, we're gonna be hunting over here in a uh, stubble bean field. On the edge of a thicket, so we'll see what happens. They're out there. All right, so you guys have already kind of had some success this season out here, huh? Yeah, yeah. Jacob, uh, Jacob shot a six point during the youth hunt, and then uh, I got a six point, and then I actually shot an eight point two days ago. So. So the pressure's on him now. <laughs> no pressure at all. Jacob was ready and confident with his 50 cal muzzleloader. At the age of 12, he's already got a handful of successful deer hunts under his belt. Opening morning was dead calm with not a breath of wind, and so far, no sight of deer. But Scott was having fun with his son. Oh, it's just the bonding, the father-son, and I mean, spending time with him and just, the, you know, trying to teach him the the right thing and the ethical way to do everything and you know it's just nice being out in the outdoors and he enjoys it and it keeps him you know occupied other than being on a you know electronics not saying electronics are bad but you know there's nothing like the great outdoors we were starting to see some activity in the woods to the south of the field a few does moved through and now a group of hen turkeys was making their way out into the field it was an unusual morning with only one or two shots heard from other nearby hunters, but Jacob has lots of patience. I started out hunting when I was like five years old and I've shot maybe 10 deer. Cool, and what do you like about it? Just being outdoors and listening to all the sounds of nature. What do you like about hanging out with your dad? Is that a fun part of it? Yeah. She looks like a cow. 
With a close call on a nervous doe, the morning hunt was over. After a quick break at Scott's in-law's family farm, he and Jacob headed back out to Jacob's lucky blind for the afternoon hunt. I shot most of my deer in that blind, except one. I shot a nice six point during the youth season, so I have a buck tag for four or more on one side and a doe tag, so hopefully we can get one tonight. The evening hunt started out slow, but then a young doe fawn popped out of the thick stuff. Scott says the deer and turkeys like to use an old railroad bed just inside the woods as a travel corridor. Lots of times they'll make a detour and step out in the field here. It's so quiet I can hear it chewing. That little fawn ate in the cut bean field until the sun went down on opening day. After a long day in the blind, we were blessed with a gorgeous sunset. The next morning we saw a group of turkeys in the fog and that was about it. Our hope was on the evening hunt. I'm wearing my lucky hat tonight. Hopefully it works. All right, something's got to change, right? Yeah. <laughs> We're pulling out all the stops tonight. <laughs> Even a blind full of lucky hats didn't seem to help with our deer hunt. A nice group of toms did come out into the field and shifted our thoughts to a spring turkey hunt for a moment. But Jacob's lucky hat wasn't working on the deer. An unlucky black cat crossed our path, and we figured that couldn't be a good sign at all. The sun set on day two, and we had plans to run into Richmond and check out the buck pole there. I did get a message from the Hakens on the 18th that Jacob dropped a bruiser of a nine point with a perfect shot. After our evening hunt, we hit the road and headed down to Dick Hoover's auto dealership for their fifth annual buck pull. It seemed like most hunters had a slow couple of days so far, but there were still a few dandy bucks hanging on the pole. Kim Jogowitz, Jenny Olson, we're here again at the I buck pull at Dick Hoover. Yes, fifth year in a row. This is amazing. It is, it is. It just gets bigger every year. I can't believe it. I mean, I don't know of any other buck pull that I've ever been to that has live band and stuff for the kids to do. And it, the, we started out with the, the, the family theme in, in process, and every year we just add more and more. Um, this year we've got the s'more station for the kids, so what more, you know, the bounce house. We got everything, you know, ceramics. There's just so much to do. And even, even though it's been a weird year with um, the weather, again, not quite typical hunting weather in Michigan, um, we don't have as many deer, but we've got just as many people coming out because there's so much to do. Yes, yeah. it's become kind of a community staple. Yes. People look forward yes. to this. Yes, yes, yeah. We get phone calls starting October. When's the buck ball? <laughs> Which cracks me up because it's always opening day and the day after. So <laughs> it's the same days every year. Uh, it's, it's just so cool. It's fun to be here. There's such a good energy here, yeah. big bonfire. Yeah. And, uh, yes, yeah. Just, and, and the vendors that come out and sponsor, um, they, they just want to keep adding more and more stuff to it every year and then we love it yeah yeah, yeah. So what we did this year is we made sure that every hunter got a prize no matter what so whether they scored high or not everybody's getting a prize speaking of hunters doug schmidt was here with a beautiful eight point Sorry, what happened out there i was just getting down out of my ladder and i took two steps down the ladder and here he come you're getting down yes in the after the morning hunt uh it was in the evening it was in the evening. It was about an hour before dark. I was going to go out to the edge of the beans and uh, two steps down and here he come. No so I jumped way. back up the ladder and he came right to me. How far away was the shot? About 30 yards. 30 yards? 30 yards. <laughs> yeah. So I imagine he didn't go very far. No, I hit him with my double lot buck and he went straight down. Oh, beautiful job. You got him on opening day? Yeah. Nice. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Good deal. All right, what's your name? Where are you from? My name's Tom Lerner. I shot this guy in Lapeer. Lapeer. What's your last name? Lerner. Lerner. Yep. Okay. So did you get him today or yesterday? Today, this morning, 720. Nice. How did yep. that all unfold? Uh, he came out of some thick stuff behind me to my left and walked in front of a scrape. Stopped by the scrape and I shot him right right there by the scrape. Have you heard very much going on in the woods this year for the season? Oh, uh, not not really. Not a whole lot of crazy success stories yet, but uh, there's still some time. Yeah. All right. Yep. Were you hunting on the ground or in a tree? I was in a tree stand. Okay. Yep. How far out? Thirty yards. Thirty yards again. Yep. Thirty yard shot. Is yep. this your biggest buck? It is. All right. Did you get him scored? I did. It's uh, scored, I believe, 129. Really? Yep. Oh, that's beautiful. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next up, 14-year-old Seth Bailey had a great eight-point hanging. All right. Well, tell me what happened out there. When did you get him? 
opening day. Opening day? I was sitting in the shack and I heard stuff off into some thick stuff that was to the side of me while I was looking over there. And I looked out the other window and he was coming out of the bushes and like he got probably like five or ten yards away from me and he stopped and uh, pulled up shot. Five or ten yards away? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what was going through your head? It come out quick. It was it was at like a truss, so I just kind of pulled up, got him in the crosshairs and shot. And I thought maybe he was chasing a doe because a little bit after I shot him, he, uh, a doe come out and when I shot him, he had his head up. It looked like he was like sniffing, so I think he was chasing after a doe. Wow! And what were you using? What kind of gun? Muzzle loader. Muzzle loader. Did he go very far? Probably. 50 yards. Did you get to watch him drop? No, he went behind some thick stuff. Oh man, so you got to do the tracking job. Yeah. How did that all go? That was good. It was Ooh. short. Awesome. Well, congratulations. Thank you. That's just great, Seth. Woohoo! Joelle Purdy from Columbus, Michigan shot her first ever deer, this nice six point. Oh, that is so fun. So were you by yourself when you shot? No, my husband and I were in a pop-up. Okay, so what happened? When did you get him? Uh, 515 this evening. Oh my god. Yeah. Just brought him in. Yes. Fresh off the truck. Yep, it was still steaming, still hot. <laughs> so how did that happen? Well, um, he was coming out, he was coming out of out of out of the woods, really far away. All you could see was a black dot. Um, I didn't think we were gonna have another shot or have any shot at all. He went back in the woods and he came out um, closer to us, about 150 yards, uh, and he came a little bit closer. And uh, unfortunately, I wasn't quite ready for it because my husband, I was set up, like it was my husband's side of the blinds. So I had to hurry up and kind of switch gears and I'm pregnant, so I had to kick the chair out from behind me and pull up the, sh I was shaking, I was, I was breathing really heavy, so I had to grab a shooting stick and try to set it up as quickly as possible and took a shot to it and uh, unfor I spined it, it dropped immediately, so I had to take another shot, and knocked it down and it dropped, so yeah, thank you. That baby you're carrying uh -huh. is probably the youngest, starting out young, honey. I guess, yeah, I guess. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Twelve year old Ryan Amato from Fairhaven was here with his beautiful eight point. Cool. So how old are you, Ryan? I'm twelve. Twelve years old. Is this your first buck? Yeah. This is huge, man. Good job. How did this happen? You shot him yesterday at opening day? Mm -hmm. Cool. So where were you? I was hunting in a tree stand. Yeah? And he came along through the trail and then uh, I saw him and then I took a shot at him. And nice. I got him. How, how far away? Um, probably like 30 feet. That's it? Yeah. Whoa. So you got a good shot on him. Mm -hmm. What kind of gun were you using? My 20 gauge. 20 gauge. Nice. So what happened then? Did he run very far? Um, He ran into the woods and we had to drag him out of there. Okay. But, Could yeah. you believe it? Were you pretty shaky when it happened? Yeah. Do you know what they mean by buck fever now? <laughs> Eric Priestcorn was hunting in K-Pack and dropped this 13-point bruiser on opening morning. We're, uh, we were sitting, in the, I was sitting in my stand, and my dad was sitting, I don't know, maybe 100 yards away from me. We hunt the same patch of woods. And uh, 7.20, 7.30, you know, I heard that first shot and, you know, yeah. jump. So I see a doe, and it was close, it was him that shot at it. I see a doe run out into the soybean field. And then he was right behind, hot on her, so that was it. Put How the scope on her. Uh, I'd say 175 yards. Oh my gosh, what were you thinking? Have you guys ever seen this buck before? Um, we think that my dad missed it last year and it didn't have this sight on it. So you think he hit it? Do you think that was an injury sight then that grew like that? You know, no, no, when he shot at it, it was just one, it just had one side oh, on it. Wow. Yeah. Okay, cool. But, I don't know. So, what in the world? What were you thinking when you <laughs> shot that thing? Did you see it drop? <laughs> it, well, no, I didn't see it drop. I shot it, and I'm looking through my scope, you know, after the gun jumped up, and there was nothing there. So, I was oh. like, you know, I was glassing both ways. 
Congratulations. Thank you. That's amazing. Buck Thank of a lifetime. Right? Yeah, definitely. Scott Prusik from Richmond was here with the second buck he's ever taken in his 16 years of hunting. At 28 years old, he was pretty excited to have this nice six point hanging on the pole. And Charles McConnell from Goodall's was here with this amazing buck that scored 141 and 7 eighths inches, but would have been more without the broken tines. So, where, where are you hunting? Uh, Brockway. Okay, yeah, not right around the corner yep. from where I was. Not too we far. We didn't see any deer like this over there. Well, this is actually the only one I've seen all day. Really? <laughs> yeah. So when did you get him yesterday or today? Today. Okay, second day of the season. Yep. So what time? 10 o'clock. All right. Actually, he was uh, in the thicket grunting next to my dad all morning. Really? And we come out and he's like, well, let me see if he's still in there and we'll, I'll try to chase him to you. And he come flying right out. Whoa, so, so you were standing on the ground? Yeah. Okay, so how far away did he come? About 70 yards. Okay, so, so what happened? Was he booking out of there? He, he was booking and I, <laughs> I got a couple shots into him and then I had track him for a while and I got close enough to jump uh, jump him and get another shot into him and put him down. So one of the shots uh, yeah, might this have taken be, a couple inches. This would be the one, that, uh, <laughs> the one that put him down and took him out. I had no idea he was this bad. No. Oh my gosh, no. so walking up on it. What were you thinking? I can't say I can't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what happened when you walked up and saw part of his rack missing? I went to look for him, but it was just some pretty high grass. I couldn't find him, but I was still happy. It scored 140, 141 and 7 eighths. And the guy that said it, that scored it said it would have went over 160 if it wouldn't have had the broken tines. Oh. So I cut myself short on that one. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you very much. Congrats to all the successful hunters here in Michigan this season, and good luck to those still looking to fill their tags. Well, let's jump across the state to the west side, just outside of Baldwin. It's where I was spending the first couple days of the firearm deer season. This deer camp was a little different than most, partly because good friend Craig Lem was involved. To Craig, what in the world we got here? Man... I don't know how we can describe this fire pit. <laughs> this is probably a genuine Baldwin special. Redneck Baldwin special <laughs> fire pit. Now, don't mind the stuff up top and we cook on it, Jimmy. That's flavor. <laughs> that's flavor. And it doesn't get real hot. The rust is already, that's clean. Wow. That's a beauty. Two, so two tire rims? That's two tire rims welded together around the, around the back side with a hole cut out in the middle. And, you know, she lets off some heat. Wow. Works great. So now you're kind of in a little neighborhood here, so you got a bunch of people that are kind of live right around here. That yeah, you know, along? you and I talked about this before as far as the uh, traditional deer camps yeah. where everybody's in the woods or they might have a camper or a motor home or a pull-up tent. We all have homes. Everybody lives in the neighborhood. We've got a guy across the street, Frank. We've got the guys down at the end of the street, Bill, and, and his friends. And every year we just get together this year with you being here we're going to host it here okay we got a little bit more room tonight we're going to have a, a shrimp boil for dinner wow um so i mean we cook a good meal hmm. and we just kind of have fun hang around not necessarily hang around this campfire jim <laughs> it doesn't look like it's doing so well i'm not that great of a fire starter so i'm just saying it may need gas i've always said that <laughs> sometimes i'm not here for a merit badge jimmy i want some heat <laughs> well, the night was off and running. The Deer Eve is always special, and add a shrimp boil to it, man, you've got the recipe for a good time. And I have to say, the food was out of this world, and we were just hoping that the hunting the next morning could compare. So now where we were, like many places across the Lower Peninsula, the big deal about opening morning was the fog. It was thick, and it was hard to see more than 50 yards from your tree stand. Now, Craig was below me, and we had a great view from a ridge top near some cutover and it was close to noon before the fog lifted where we were. Hunting public land like we were doing today is always a bit of a gamble with a camera, but the guys had been seeing a lot of good sign and had taken a few nice bucks. We had high hopes, but for our two days of hunting, we had little to show for it. Two days in, we saw one deer this morning, maybe one yesterday, we weren't quite sure. The weather's just warm, I mean, it's warm. What yeah. are you supposed to do? It's you know, it's getting up into 60 degrees during the day. We were just talking coming out today or this morning. It's beautiful out here. I mean, probably should just get the boat out and go bass fishing because <laughs> this is crazy. But what are you supposed to do, You're right? I mean, it's it's federal land, state land, warm weather, no pressure. Deer weren't out. It just 
what do we do? It's still another thing. If you, it's opening day. You got to be out there. You got to be out. There's no better place to be in in the woods of Michigan. So there you go. Might as well do it, right? <laughs> Back at camp, however, Frank Peltz had connected with a nice public land buck. It was a pretty slow day. Just I guess I was at the right place at the right time. This is what QDM does up in Baldwin, Michigan. Yeah. Well, tell me what happened. How far was the shot? What time of day? All that good stuff. Well, it was late. There wasn't much action in the morning. About 3.30, I had five does come in, and they milled around. And next thing I know, he was about 100 yards back along the ridge line, making a scrape. Didn't think I was going to get a shot. He finally came in, and I was lucky enough, right when the doe spooked, he stayed around, and I got the shot in. So. About how far was the shot? Uh, 55, 60 yards. And you were using what? A 300 wind mag. 300 wind mag. Very nice. Well, yeah. congratulations on a beautiful state land buck. Thank you. Well, here we are day two of the firearm deer season here in the great state of Michigan, and I am leaving Craig and the guys over in Lake County. They're just lots of good spots over there and some really good guys, but just nobody was seeing much deer movement, and there wasn't many people over out, out on the public ground to really kind of move those deer around. It's been warm, uh, so just not a lot of activity over there, uh, at least right where we were. And so I'm gonna, I left Lake County. I'm over here in Mason County now at a buddy's place here who's got a really nice deer camp. They've been seeing a lot of deer. They got a couple on the ground. In fact, I'm going to get an uh, interview with a couple of the uh, successful hunters here um, before we head out. But it's always a gamble when you leave somebody on day two of the season. And so I'm hoping that Craig shoots a big monster buck uh, tonight. But we just, I rolled the dice and over here in Mason County now for probably tonight and tomorrow morning. We'll see what it, see what we find. But uh, I'm actually getting to hunt a little bit now. So I'll have a rifle in my hand and a camera. We'll see if we made the right decision. I'm going to go in and talk to the guys and see what we're going to do tonight. Okay, all right, Dave. Well, tell me what happened with this nice buck here. Well, I got in the blind early and uh, waited for it to get light. And uh, just as it was getting light, here come a nice deer walking down the pine row. And uh, so uh, he came and uh, turned broadside, and I let him have it. <laughs> and that was when? That was uh, November 16 at about... Uh, 735. Oh, that, so that was just this morning then? Yeah, just oh, this okay. morning. Yep. Nice. Buck. So how far yeah. was the shot, did you say? Uh, about 75 yards. Okay. And how were you seeing lots of deer the day one, day two? Was it up, down, or what do you think? Yeah, I saw quite a few uh, deer uh, yesterday. Okay. And then, uh, yep, this one came in today. So Nice job. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Well, Allison Bradshaw had a monster buck that she had taken on public land opening day. What county were you in? Where were you guys hunting? Lake County, uh, but public land off of US 10. And uh, got this guy, 8.30 in the morning, opening day. Well, tell me what happened. I mean, this thing's a giant. Could you see how big he was when he was coming in? Yeah, um, we had seen quite a few bucks on our trail cam uh, the week before. And uh, was looking actually for another eight point that had been on the trail cam. And uh, heard him coming straight behind me, turned around and actually thought he was a spike corn to begin with <laughs> until he moved around another tree and I was like oh goodness he's wow. he's big and he spotted me at that moment and turned and started walking back the direction he'd come in and I was able to just uh, get my rifle up on a limb and he took a few more steps and was able to get a nice broadside shot of him he ran about 80 yards I heard him drop and crash and wow. heard him crash one more time waited a few minutes before i got up out of the blind and went and how far was the shot i'm um, about 40 yards oh so he was right close he was pretty close so okay and you were who were you hunting with hunting with my dad nice. uh, dan bradshaw and my uncle otto allison we've been doing this for since i was 18 and they've been at the same deer camp for 39 years. Wow. Yeah. And you shot him with an old 3030. My great grandfather's 3030 Savage. That's awesome. Yep. Nice job. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Well, finally, after a few days of sitting with Craig, I was able to hit the woods myself. Here in Mason County, I did see deer every sit and even had a legal buck in front of me with three on a side. And not being known for passing deer, <laughs> this guy did get a pass. So, was the opener this year a bust? Well, it depends on your point of view. Did we have a buck getting shot on camera? Well, no. Did we have good food and get to spend some time with good friends? Yes. Did I get three days in the woods to marvel at the creation? Yes. So from my point of view, the opener was what I hoped it would be. Good times with friends at a few different deer camps. The hunting, well, it could have been better. But you know what? That's what will keep me coming back here in Michigan's Out of Doors. 
Thanks for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. From all of us here at the TV show to all of you and your families, we wish you a happy and safe Thanksgiving weekend. And good luck to everybody like me who's still out in the woods this weekend trying to fill their deer tags. We hope you have a happy and safe hunt out there. On next week's show, we're going to show you how Jordan and Gabe did on their opening day hunts up in the Upper Peninsula. And we'll tag along with a Purple Heart veteran to see how he did the first couple of days of the season. You won't want to miss next week's show. And check us out on our Facebook page when you get a chance. That's Michigan Out of Doors TV on Facebook. All of you youth hunters on there, there's a pretty cool photo contest going on right now with some awesome prizes from our friends at Greenstone Farm Credit Services. And in the meantime, we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station for Michigan Out of Doors. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by by Showspan, producing consumer shows including the Ultimate Fishing Show Detroit, January 12th through 15th at Novi's Suburban Collection Showplace. The show features fishing tackle, trips, boats, and seminars on all Michigan game fish. The Ultimate Fishing Show, Novi, January 12th through 15th. By Jay's Sporting Goods with locations in Clare and Gaylord. Jay's, serving the Michigan outdoor enthusiast since 1971 with a wide variety of outdoor products. The gear, the knowledge, the tradition of Jays. On the web at jayssportinggoods.com. By the Michigan chapters of Safari Club International. For over 40 years, SCI has been protecting hunters' rights and promoting wildlife conservation here in Michigan and around the world. SCI chapter locations can be found on the web at firstformichigan.org. By Greenstone Farm Credit Services, making recreational land ownership possible across Michigan and northeast Wisconsin. Begin your land financing journey at one of Greenstone's 37 locations or visit greenstonefcs.com. Closed captioning is provided by Marvo Mineral, makers of Lucky Buck. Deer management products including minerals to supplement deer diets year-round to improve health and antler growth. Oh, Jen, you shot this? I did, wasn't that awesome? Oh, you know, it's a crazy story. I'm sitting on the porch in the morning and I'm painting my nails, and I'm getting ready, just in my hair, perfume, the whole thing, sitting having my coffee. And out of the blue, here I see this rat coming across the yard. So I'm like, oh my gosh, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab my gun. So I just went in the house, made all kinds of noise, still sat there. Here he comes across the yard, dropped him, dropped him right, dropped there, him right there. Yeah, the craziest thing, it's the biggest buck that I've ever shot. What's going on here? Oh, wait a minute.